One of the reasons why we have a Truth and Reconciliation Commission is that we should learn from past mistakes and never repeat it. Much of the abuse of the past happened inside police cells and prisons. Recently, at a special hearing on police cells, former political detainees spoke passionately for a penal system that would not ever again be based on inhumanity and degradation. At about the same time, CMAX was unveiled, the new super security unit at Pretoria's maximum security prison. Is CMAX a return to the days of John Foster Square and Robben Island? In September, at the end of his amnesty application for the Motherwell bombing, where security policemen blew up their colleagues, convicted mass murderer Eugene de Kock wanted to meet the family members of the murdered men. Mr. de Kock, in, lastly, um, I'm instructed on behalf of those who I represent to say that your expressions of regret and sympathy have been noted and that should your desire to meet the families of those who have been killed be a genuine desire, that can be arranged. I'd be very glad of that opportunity and I would like my legal representative to make arrangements with Mr. Ford because currently I'm under the jurisdiction of correctional services and they must just look at that legal aspect because I am currently in a maximum security prison where I can speak to nobody other than members of correctional services, but I would like to do that. Eugene de Kock could not speak to those families because he had just been moved to a new cell at Pretoria Maximum Security Prison. Cell 63 is housed in South Africa's new super maximum security unit known as CMAX, closed maximum security unit. Life at CMAX means exactly that, confinement, enclosure and 24-hour surveillance. De Kock is locked in a single cell for 23 hours, in effect held in solitary confinement. The single cell has a wire mesh ceiling which allows warders to watch the inmates all the time. De Kock cannot speak to anybody besides warders or fellow prisoners during the one hour of daily exercise. Exercise happens in an enclosed space and even then prisoners' conversations are monitored. De Kock will receive his visitors three times a month behind a glass wall. They will speak through an intercom system. He cannot smoke a cigarette, he will eat in his cell, he will not shave, there is no television. He can read magazines and newspapers if the authorities think he deserves it. And every time he is taken outside of his cell, he will be handcuffed. Why is De Kock in CMAX? Why are any of these prisoners in CMAX? The man who is driving the super prison notion, which is a growing trend worldwide, Dr. Kulakani Satole explains. And we had to, to look at a method where we can specifically look at these people with aggressive behaviors, with escapees, and sort of uh, uh, put them in a program for a period of three months, after which we evaluate them, we talk to them to see that they are prepared to get into the mainstream prison and they are not prepared to be disruptive and aggressive to other people. And what we did, we did a big surveillance. We went all over you know, the world and we saw the idea of CMEX. We saw how it worked in, 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 in England. It might not be called CMEX. And we saw how it worked in, in, in America. And the concept of America is the concept that we took and translated them into South African conditions. Uh, that the people who are disruptive to the prison population should be taken to an, is an isolated area and receive individual treatment themselves. And this individual treatment is based on the fact that in developing a prisoner, you have to restrain and you have to, 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 to give. There is agreement that those prisoners who kill run gang or drug operations and repeatedly attempt escape should be kept away from other prisoners. But watchdog groups like the Human Rights Commission have other concerns. There's a big question mark about who goes to CMAX. De Kock, for instance, was sent to CMAX a few days after he had been upgraded to an A-group prisoner for model behavior. A-group status in the, in the penal world means uh, the best possible behavior 
it allows you contact visits, and it's earned. Now, if this person had earned A group status... Is this Eugene de Kock? That's right. Now, uh, notwithstanding the horrors of the crimes that he'd committed, if he'd earned A group status on the criteria that the department had laid down, and the department was saying to the prisoner, we're reasonably happy with your behavior. You look at the prognosis of, of Eugene de Kock. Anybody who thinks I took Eugene from a, a Sunday school to prison is just a fallacy. He has a, poor, a bad profile, an evil profile, if you think of people he killed. And at this point in time, how do you evaluate him and think that he may not continue that behavior? And I want to emphasize, whoever made him an A was a big mistake. But finally, and perhaps most importantly, they ease the question of whether the CMAX concept is in line with the rights of prisoners as set out in the Constitution. The Constitution states that conditions of detention should be consistent with human dignity. The, the Constitution explicitly forbids torture. And torture has been internationally, as you point out, recognized to, to cover just not physical abuse, but psychological torture. And I would agree that psychological torture is probably the most a severe form of torture. Uh, I think internationally and nationally tests have indicated that uh, holding someone under those type of conditions must cause severe damage to the emotional uh, and psychological profile of that individual. And if that individual is ultimately to be released into society, then are we being responsible to society as well? What, what kind of people are we then releasing into the community? If prisoners kill each other, step each other, they are always on my neck. They are always fighting and saying we don't respect the, the, the human rights of prisoners. And when we start to restrain and start to develop prisoners so that they should stop aggressive behavior, then we don't respect the human rights of prisoners. Uh, CMAX is unveiled as a process is underway in our country of truth and reconciliation. We are told that, that the country is shocked by what is unfolding every day with regard to the horrors of the past. One would have hoped that that would have led to some kind of consciousness on the part of the public to say, well, we've seen what's happened in the past, we must avoid it. But yet we, we, we have unveiled an institution that is, that is so draconian and surprisingly there is wide public support for it. Now that may ask a legitimate question, are we really learning from the past?